Hello, my name is Wes Shipley, and I'm making this video for our Web 2.0 and social media class. Um, I didn't see a subject or a link in suggestion in the description for the assignment, um, so I decided I would just talk about something interesting that I kind of found while I was doing the Web 2.0 terms glossary. I was filling out a, a glossary item for digital humanities, and I was trying to think of some examples. And I knew some, you know, authors and some books, um, but I was looking for some more, and I found this really cool project. It's um, a new series from the Open Humanities Press, and it's called Living Books About Life. Um, and it's kind of a new model for publishing. It's a freely shared, and, and they call it living, um, because it's open to collaborative processes of writing, editing, updating, and remixing by the readers. Um, and it offers access to scientific research with interactive audiovisual material. And it's kind of aiming to rethink the book itself as like a collaborative endeavor. And it's really an interdisciplinary bridge between like the humanities and science. It's like a big multidisciplinary pro like big multidisciplinary like physics for poets. If you've ever heard of a class like that, um, and it's trying to look at life both philosophically and scientifically. And and some of the titles that have been uh, collaborative collaboratively written are astrobiology, and bioethics, and ubiquitous surveillance. Which is interesting from a philosophical perspective because that's Foucault's Panopticon, and I'm going to be really interested to read it and see what the like scientific perspective on that is. Um, the title that interested me most was called um, Biosemiotics, and semiotics is the structuralist study of meaning making. You may have heard of the semiotic triangle. <clears throat> it's of the the sign, the signified, and the signifier. Like if you take the word rose. Um, the sign is like the idea of, of a rose. Um, you have like some, some idea of rose and that it smells and how it looks. You have an idea, that's the sign. Um, the signified is if there was an actual rose in the room that I was speaking about. That's, that's the rose itself, is the signified. Um, the signifier is the things we use to represent that rose, um, like the word rose. And me speaking it, saying rose, those sounds, or if you see it written, the letters and the way they're constructed. Um, Anyway, there's an, there's an author um, named Derrida, or a philosopher named Derrida, who's a post-structuralist. And, and he writes these really confusing books, but, but they're really interesting, too. Um, and, and he's kind of a post-structuralist, although he wouldn't want to be pigeonholed as such. But as I understand him, he kind of talks about a metaphysics of presence and absence, absence related to semiotics. He, he argues that there's like a, a disconnect or a fundamental breakdown in that semiotic triangle that that um, the the signified is never the signifier is never the sign that those things are never you're never able to fully be present you know with the thing um, or with its reference or with its idea that there's always a breakdown in that um, which is a really interesting idea um, and it, and it makes sense in in the sense of like it would be impractical if when I said rose a physical rose came out of my mouth that would be painful um, and and it's the idea of the map is not the territory because it wouldn't fit in your pocket. Um, anyway, getting back to the idea of biosemiotics, the first time I'd ever heard of it um, was in this book called Hiding. It's written by Mark Taylor, and it's kind of like a comic book for postmodernism. Um, it's, a, it's a really cool book. I know everything's backwards on here, but it's a really cool book. Um, and he's, he quotes uh, Donna Haraway, who's my favorite feminist philosopher. I, I designed my whole interdisciplinary studies undergrad degree around an article she wrote. Anyway, he quotes Donna Haraway in saying that the body is a coded text organized in, as an engineered communication system ordered by a fluid and dispersed command and control intelligence network. And he goes on to say, the biomedical, biotechnical body is a semiotic system, a complex meaning-producing field for which the discourse of immunology that is the central biomedical discourse of recognition, misrecognition, has become a high-stakes practice in many sins. And he's talking about immunology as being the science of self and non-self discrimination. Um, the idea that your body is able to distinguish between itself and an incoming invader, like a virus or a bacteria. And this gets interesting in, in the study of like autoimmune diseases, where the body is like unable to make that self-other distinction by making itself an other. Um, and it's interesting, you know, considering 
Derrida's metaphysics of presence and absence and that breakdown of semiotics, um, what if Derrida was on to something? You know, what if there is something to that communications breakdown, to that metaphysics of absence within semiotics that could, that could lead to a better understanding of autoimmune diseases? Um, you know, I think, that, I think that the Web 2.0 is kind of fundamentally an interdisciplinary or, or better, a, a transdisciplinary um, tool and, and I think that we have the tools, and we have the problems, and we have the resources. All we need is the, the communication, the collaboration, and the participation in these discourses. Um, and hopefully we can de develop new perspectives, um, and hopefully maybe solutions to some of these emergent problems in our modern age.